So the Fort Hood shooting occurred yesterday. Three people rampaged, and uh, immediately, you know, it's a tragedy. How can we prevent this? On one side and the other, um, they're coming for our guns. The guy was on, you know, prescription drugs. Uh, he was a mind control patsy. And this, this stuff will still continue, and there will be no real solutions. And it's I'm finding it harder and harder to actually understand what actually is happening. I have my own opinions, but it's harder and harder I find to form an opinion because I don't have all the facts, so I can just kind of speculate. So that's why I've kind of lost a decent amount of interest in making these videos, is because I find that. I don't really want to say anything anymore, and I could just cover articles and read them and stuff and let you form your own opinion, which I usually, that's what I want you to do, form your own opinion. But um, things are so convoluted, people are so fragmented, it's hard to really, you know, we're all about like, well, what's, what's the solutions? we got to fix the problems. How can we fix the problems if we can't agree on a solution? Um, and most people aren't even aware that there is a problem, or if there is, what it is. You know, what's that problem? I think most people agree that things are fucked up, things are messed up, you know? The system needs to change. There's a reason why sometimes I'll say I, I wish the whole thing would just collapse. Because if there's people that want to keep it going. They fear the dollar collapse, or they fear um, some kind of big disaster or something like that. They're preparing, they're stockpiling and hoarding stuff. I want the whole thing to collapse so that we can form our own communities uh, voluntarily. I don't think that the system's, you know, just damaged and needs to be repaired. I think it needs to go away. That's why I find it harder and harder to make these videos is because I feel like when I see the comments, and this is no offense, I, I always try to encourage people to comment and stuff like that, but I hardly find people with solutions that are similar to mine. Um, they usually are, they, you know, they'll use terms that have been defined for them, you know, like, uh, you know, a communist or a leftist or a uh, right-wing, far-right radical, you know, a racist. And all of those terms, all those ideas have been totally convoluted, and they don't mean what they, what we think that they mean. So people will want to say something, but they can't because those terms and those definitions have already been tainted with some kind of different uh, meaning. If you, if, you know, if you catch what, uh, catch my drift here. Someone asked me in a comment if I was going to cover the shootings in New Mexico and how people are, you know, protesting and stuff. And I didn't know what to think, you know. I I didn't know what to make of it. Usually I'll go down the, oh, you know, yeah, it's a police state and, and people need to take back the government and they need to be held accountable. So I kind of gave it a few days uh, to not cover it. And then this happened, this uh, Fort Hood shooting. And I thought, well, you know, this, is a, this would be a good distraction. You know, then you had this Kent State the same day, student charge after a shot fired at Kent State. So it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some kind of operation, you know, to distract people. Because it's all about, what, fragmenting people and their ideas so they don't actually solve the problems. They can't come up with a, a solution. Because it's always got to be big and grand and everything. It can't just be on a local, local base, right? A local, com real community. It has to be in a corporate community and a large community, a large corporate community-based that are solving problems. And what you find is that because there's so many people with so many different ideas, you know, they call it democracy, is that, um, is that yeah. nobody's really participating individually in changing anything. So if they were acting uh, on a more local level where they were actually participating in the decision-making process, yeah. they would actually be able to change something, yeah. which is why this system allows protests. They encourage it free speech because people's ideas are for the most part 
yeah, they're all, they're fragmented, they're changed, and they're different, whatever. But in the end of the at the end of the day, they're the same because they all came from the same source. So this guy uh, uh, down in Mexico, he got shot, and there's actually a video of it. This U.S. Marshals shoot on our man in Albuquerque. Sees cell phone cameras from witnesses, and of course, it's like, you know, I never realized it before, but it's like a lot of times. We're seeing footage. We don't know what the hell happened before. We're just seeing some guy down, shot in the head, and everyone's saying, that's enough. This is enough, right? So, obviously, you know, these guys aren't able to kill people. We know that, right? We already know that we live in a police state. Again, with that video, there was something, I mean, you can disagree with me. I know the, the cops were ever on paid leave or something like that. I'm not saying that the guy didn't get killed. I'm also not saying that that was a hoax. There was something about it that just seemed almost like it was staged or something. Um, it, so then when I heard about the another shooting and then I heard what the people were saying, you know, they were speaking and half of it was Spanish. Um, it, it almost seems like this is being done to provoke people. So they're coming for our guns, right? And it makes me wonder if they're trying to get people to act. So these angry Albuquerque residents are involved in this protest. And this was what? Um, it says here, online hacktivists, anonymous, collective anonymous, uh, they're no stranger to fomenting outrage, is pledged to keep a cyber spotlight on the Albuquerque police. So right there, I don't trust that. I see them as like damage control, right? It's the latest campaign for the same shadowy group that brought attention to the Occupy Wall Street. That went nowhere, right? How many bankers were actually, um, uh, you know, sent to court and went to jail. I covered that before. Most of them, none. No, no cases filed. Uh, you know, cops protect the, each other. That's why most of the time they never actually, uh, they never actually, nothing happens to them. So I'm going to go in different directions with this video. I'm halfway through. But it's like people need to, it, they're, so by protesting this, you're saying that, okay, so we need cops. We need cops. They're just, you know, they're just out of control. There's too many of them. They have too much power. But they need to exist. I don't think so. And I have my own reasoning for that. And I'll go in this different direction of more of how uh, people are enslaved through the economy uh, through debt. So these people, these cops, they're protecting the law. Well, who makes the law? Well, most people think that it's them through politics, through the elections, through voting. Well, the, the problem is quote problem is that it's not that the politicians are bad it's that they don't need to exist people need to decide for themselves there's you know people will say we need to go back to you know our forefathers their forefathers they effed you they effed you up the rear uh, with the system that they set up uh, we have what they had set up which was probably the way it was supposed to be set up again this may offend a lot of people lose subscribers that's okay but there's no point in just carrying out a narrative if I don't agree with it anymore. This country was set up by a select few of very wealthy people who got people outraged because they were being taxed. Uh, it was like a corporate tax uh, by the King of England with a T. So, you know, and then they fomented outrage and people did all of their killing for them. And I, I just would not want to see that happen again here in this, uh, in this country or anywhere else. It's not that I don't care about freedom it's just that I, liberty, we got to define the terms. I don't believe in the avenue of what free, the avenue to real freedom, which is direct democracy, not representative democracy, right? Uh, the, the, this is, you know, the forefathers, they're the ones that, these type of people that have a lot of money, they're the ones that make the laws, not you, because you didn't participate. Uh, even in these protests, like I said uh, before, the, these are corporatized protests. They're, they're fashion statements. You feel better about yourself. Uh, at the end of the day, you did what you want, you got what you wanted, but you didn't get what you really needed. Because they define what you want, what you need, and it's all consumer-based society. We know this, as I'm not saying anything that's new. So, it, I do have an ultimate point here, and I'm getting to it. And that is, I thought about it earlier today, you know. Of course, you know, people are going to think they're coming for their guns. Well, they're not coming for your guns, because they're not afraid of you. They're not afraid of you actually organizing. It's not about bullets and blood and guts. Revolution, um, 
it's, it's because people have too much to lose. And that's what I thought about. I actually isolated it to Russia, which was kind of ironic because Russia right now is in a situation. And I said, yeah, you know, enough with the uh, Putin worshiping. But I thought about it this way, you know, they don't care about guns. They'll make a bunch of money off of it and stuff like that. And they know that people will not unite on a single principle nationally because they can't do it locally because their communities locally are corporatized townships sell communities cities are selling communities people that live next to each other that work so that they can take on debt so that they can work so they can pay off the interest of that debt and this, you know it goes on and on and on so everything that is uh, that when people get together and congregate it's uh it's done through some kind of financial means approved right you know, a fest, a town fest, or whatever. Um, how many times have you been to a family picnic when you were a kid, say in the 70s or 80s, even the early 90s? How often do you go to family picnics now? Hardly any, right? It's not, it, because people don't do that anymore. They have to have family reunions because they are disunited. Even the families are, the communities are. So how are we going to get together on some grand national or global level and, and stop this? That's why I don't see it happening that way. Then I thought about Okay, so that's what keeps people down. That's what keeps people from ever actually changing anything is because they have too much to lose and they're too compromised with, with debt. So there will be no revolution unless it's invoked, created outrage, like anonymous or whatever, like a revolution, unless it's provoked. That's what the elites want. They say, ooh, overpopulation, they're trying to kill us with chemtrails. You know, that's what it's all about. Uh, they may be trying to make us sick. There's many reasons for chemtrails, but they the elites over here in the west they like a lot of people because it does drive down wages that's why it, there's all multiple purposes why do they have women that are no longer in the families it's not because they've been liberated it's because they want them to increase the workforce which drives down wages so it's all about money and if it kills the family that's even better because then no one will revolt against it because they can't unite because there's no family there's no community there's no country there's just a company of a bunch of people workers, right? A labor force, human resources. So I thought about the elites, right? Oh, the elites, right? Uh, well, what I thought was different was that, say, in the Rothschilds uh, and these types of elites in the West, uh, even to a certain degree in China, but the elites in Europe and North America and now in Ukraine, uh, they want more for themselves. By that, I mean, yes, you're always going to have the haves and haves nots. I think that's usually going to be the case as long as you have a kingdom a government and people aren't truly free right a true democracy that evil uh, anarchy as they call it right chaos or that means no rulers but my point is you have rulers in russia and you have rulers in say europe and north america the rulers in the west allow a little bit more money for the for the workers for the labor force that in turns allows allows them to take on credit that allows them to have credit so they take on debt which means that they're going to be charged interest and you see in places like china where they in russia where the average person the average worker does not have that amount of credit available to them that makes the elites in russia and china and places like kazakhstan and, and south america and stuff more vulnerable to an actual change, to people actually changing something. That is because they don't have the, that amount of debt weighing them down. So they're actually freer. In China, they, oh, they don't have guns, ooh, they just, you know, they don't have guns and they have a, they're communists. Well, they're not communists, they're capitalists, right? They use usury, Russia does to a certain extent. But like places like Libya, Venezuela, these places can be overthrown if they really want to by the people because the people are more free. They say, oh, they're living in poverty. We need to spread democracy. No, they want to spread the system that we have, which is enslaving them with, with debt, making them more fashionable, uh, more consumeristic, more materialistic. You, in China, you get those people together, it don't matter whether they have guns or not. If they start uniting and, and, and organizing, you can be rest assured that those elites in China will be on a plane to, uh, to America. Why do the elites in the West want so much more? Because I think they're building the AI. I think they want to go into the transhumanist uh, society, and that we won't be needed. China is unique because the average Chinese doesn't have credit, so they have to go to work 
to buy and shop to be consumers like us. When they go fully automated, they won't need them either. And they won't need us.